Craig, good morning. Uh, a week of almost sitting still. Uh, we still have Jackson Hole to deal with here. Maybe some fireworks will come out of that that uh, get gold running. But uh, it's been okay, but not great. And as usual, before we get started, just a reminder for everyone that these weekly wrap-up segments are brought to you by the Sprott Money International Storage Program. We store over a million ounces, and we're proud of our perfect audit record. Please visit SprottMoney.com storage to learn more. Uh, Eric, yeah, you mentioned uh, we haven't done much. It, things looked pretty good last Friday, and then the rug was immediately pulled out from under us, and now we've been sideways. In fact, silver, which is pending the September yeah. silver expirations next week on the COMEX, silver has been pinned at its 200-day moving average now for 12 days. Uh, what do you make of all this action? Well, you know, it's funny. Nothing seems to make sense anymore, right? And I, I was reading articles this morning about how these um, sort of technical guys at these big banks say, well, there's a total disconnect. There's no correlation between the assets, whether it's stocks or bonds or anything like that. And, of course, I sit there well, uh, thinking to myself, well, that's what happens when the government gets involved, right? Because I, the more I watch the stock market, and we saw the rally, I think it was on uh, Wednesday, we we lost early in the week, and all of a sudden rallied out of nowhere. I think, man, this is so orchestrated, I can hardly believe it, in the stock market now. And uh, I think the same thing obviously happens in uh, precious metals. Uh, we know, even from last week's COP report, there's this huge buying of uh, comes into the, uh, the COMEX, and sure enough, every... Every contract that a technical market guy buys, the the commercial banks sell it to them. I and mean, it's just incredible. I think they sold like 40,000 contracts of gold, essentially short. And uh, so you just know it's being rigged, and you kind of wonder, well, what, what gets us out of this thing? And maybe it takes something, a real serious black swan, something violent, um, but I, there's, there's good spirit to uh, gold and silver in the sense that you know, we have lots of people recommending it now. We have people buying it. Uh, Ray Dalio at Bridgewater actually bought gold. I think it was in uh, the second quarter. Uh, lots of prominent investors are suggesting that you should have gold. And I think uh, looking at all the things that are going on in in the world, and particularly in the United States, lots of people must be thinking, what am I going to do to get away from the ultimate carnage here? You know, and one thing that has changed this year, Eric, versus the last several, is we're finally seeing the commodities in general, more specifically the industrial metals, beginning to move. Copper is breaking out of about a three-year bottom. That's pretty clear. Palladium, zinc, uh, you name it, uh, those metals are moving uh, pretty well. Do you think that could spill over and provide additional support to gold, but particularly silver? Well, it should for silver, right? I mean, it's such an industrial commodity, but... Uh... I mean, I, I don't have any problem with the physical demand for silver or gold, for that matter. I think what the problem is, is, you know, when we uh, price things off the COMEX and, and the paper uh, prices determining the physical price, we can't get the price up. Uh, but I would say generally, in all the times we've spoken this year, the, the data on the physical side of things for both gold and silver has been been quite quite good. So it just hasn't, and we've had, we've had not a bad year. I mean, we are up, what, 12% in uh, in the case of gold for the year, which is not bad, and we've got lots of year left, and lots of reason to think it might go higher, but it's been a very uh, slow progress that we're making. But I, I think we are making progress, and I think ultimately, I mean, it's hard to predict that the commercials will get overrun. I mean, that's just almost a stupid thing to say. And I hope when we get this week's COD report that maybe the commercials have did cover a lot of uh, the contracts on the, the sort of mini sell down we had here because that was a pretty small sell down after going through thirteen hundred and uh, going back down to I think just just around twelve eighty and here we are sit today at uh, twelve eighty five but I'd like to, have, to to witness that they did cover the gold that would be a very positive sign that uh, they want to uh, reduce those short positions here. You know, we're looking at a number of things uh, in the market. We're watching geopolitical risk, it seems like, a lot this year. But now we're getting into a period where we got to watch some political risk, too. Uh, September is going to be a very volatile month, it seems, with people, traders returning from holiday and faced with uh, these events in the United States you're talking about. Uh, the president seems to be politically radioactive at a time when they're talking about shutting down the government. They've got a debt ceiling debate coming with the end of the fiscal year. Uh, looks like September might be a rather interesting month, doesn't it? 
Uh, well, uh, certainly uh, September is a time that uh, gold normally has uh, exhibits pretty good strength, and I suspect it will again. Of course, one of the reasons that it tends to exhibit strength is it's a very risky month for stocks, and a lot of people are calling for a very large correction in stocks here. Uh, plus, of course, we have seasonally strong uh, physical demand for gold, for, for people, uh, for jewelry, for Christmas, and, and uh, of course, the Chinese New Year, which is in January. So uh, it, it's normally a, a pretty strong time. Uh, the presidency is just crazy. I mean, I, God knows what's going to happen down there. I mean, I just, I just, it's hard to see anything being passed. And how they're going to pass a debt bill, I don't know, unless they just sort of say, well, we, you know, hold your nose, we got to do it here. Uh, but it's, there, there's no agreement amongst anybody down there. And, and, of course, now people are speculating about the presidency, can he make it? Even his own party is asking that. So it's, uh, it must be depressing to think that there's no rudder and, uh, you know, there's going to be no hope for a tax plan or uh, replacing Obamacare or anything for that matter. So, you know, the, the thing's rudderless. And it's, it's hard to imagine the stocks continuing to go up unless they're just rigged by the, um, the working group, the government, uh, which... When I, I was just reading a comment that even the companies that outperformed in earnings didn't outperform in the stock market, that sounds to me like it's because people, groups, just buy the index. You know, right. It doesn't matter what anybody, what anybody earns or doesn't earn. They're just buying the index, and we know who would likely be just buying the index to try, try to keep the one sort of economic data point strong. And then, of course, the data point is the stock market. Everything else is weak. We've got durable goods week, we got home sales week, we got car sales week, we got store sales week. I mean, how anybody could think we have, you know, some kind of a growing economy is simply beyond me. So hopefully uh, we can break out of the rut here. There's lots of reasons for thinking that um, in, in the metals, and certainly not in the stock market. I can't even imagine people wanting to buy stocks here. And then we see guys, major institutions, reducing their allocation to stocks. So I think that trend is just getting started. You know, you mentioned something to me, too, earlier about the uh, economic destruction, the company destruction, really, of uh, other companies like Uber and Amazon and what they are doing to their competitors. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, it's a very interesting phenomenon because you have two companies that don't, that hardly make any money. And I, <clears throat> both Amazon and Uber for sure loses money. But they end up destroying the retailing business. <clears throat> so companies that formerly made money now are losing money, and the guy who's winning the retail battle doesn't make anything. And the same is true in the taxi business, that Uber loses money, and he's knocking all these cab companies out, who now, of course, are losing money. So <clears throat> it's, not a, it's not a good situation to find yourself in that somebody's prepared to create sales, and, and is not, the market's not forcing him to make money, to get his market valuation. So that's a, a funny situation for all of us to find ourselves in. Eric, one last thing I want to talk about this week. Uh, we, we made note, what is it, maybe two months ago of that very strange interview of Terry Duffy, the CEO of the CME Group, where he was on Fox Business and something that is obviously scripted. And he's talking about how gold is undervalued and should be five or $6,000 an ounce. And we're like, that's really a head scratcher. And then out of the blue, it seemed this week, uh, the Secretary of the Treasury, Mnuchin, makes the first trip of a, a Treasury official to the gold in Fort Knox in like 50 years. Now, these two things taken separately, you know, I don't know, maybe you can write them off, but isn't it a little strange, the timing of this stuff? Yeah. Well, you know, there's lots of data, and I know you've analyzed it before, where you know, there's all these exports of gold leaving the United States. And uh, goodness knows why it's leaving the United States and, and where particularly it's going. Uh, I've always doubted that the gold is there and maybe, you know, it's, it's building that, uh, something's going to break here. And, um, the treasury secretary is trying to convince everyone that it's there. I, not that I think he said it's there. I think what he said was gold is safe. <laughs> now, of course, we all knew this is Fort Knox. I don't know whether he's suggesting that all the gold was there. I, I suspect he doesn't know that, but, uh, I'm not a believer. I heard a long time ago that the gold in Fort Knox left many, many, many years ago. And I heard that from people who worked there. 
just offhanded. And so uh, I'm very skeptical that uh, the U.S. has the gold they suggest they get. We'll see. Interesting timing of it all, though, that's for certain. And uh, we'll just have to see what strange event happens next, my friend. Maybe it'll happen in the next week, and we can yeah. talk about it next Friday. <laughs> I look forward to it. You know, one thing we will talk about next Friday, too, will be the latest employment report that comes out, uh, strangely, on the first of the month. So I guess they get their data pretty quick over there at the BLS. But we'll talk about that next Friday. In between now and then, I wish you a, a good weekend and, and good luck next week. Okay, Craig, all the best to you. Manning it now. We have people buying it. Uh, Ray Dalio at Bridgewater actually bought gold. I think it was in uh, the second quarter. Uh, lots of prominent investors are suggesting that you should have gold. And I think uh, looking at all the things that are going on in in the world, and particularly in the United States, lots of people must be thinking, what am I going to do to get away from the ultimate carnage here? You know, and one thing that has changed this year, Eric, versus the last several is we're finally seeing the commodities in general. We've been sideways. In fact, silver, which is pending the September silver expirations next week on the COMEX, silver has been pinned at its 200-day moving average now for 12 days. Uh, what do you make of all this action? Well, you know, it's funny. Nothing seems to make sense anymore, right? And I, I was reading articles this morning about how these uh, sort of technical guys at these big banks say, well, there's a total disconnect. There's no correlation between the assets, the, whether it's stocks or bonds or anything like that. Craig, good morning. Uh, a week of almost sitting still. Uh, we still have Jackson Hole to deal with here. Maybe some fireworks will come out of that that uh, get gold running. But uh, it's been okay, but not great. And as usual, before we get started, just a reminder for everyone that these weekly wrap-up segments are brought to you by the Sprott Money International Storage Program. We store over a million ounces, and we're proud of our perfect audit record. Please visit SprottMoney.com storage to learn more. Uh, Eric, yeah, you mentioned uh, we haven't done much. It, things looked pretty good last Friday, and then the rug was immediately pulled out from under us. And now, and of course, I sit there well, uh, thinking to myself, well, that's what happens when the government gets involved, right? Because I, the more I watch the stock market, and we saw the rally, I think it was on uh, Wednesday, we, we lost early in the week, and all of a sudden rallied out of nowhere. I think, man, this is so orchestrated, I can hardly believe it, in the stock market now. And uh, I think the same thing obviously happens in uh, precious metals. Uh, we know, even from last week's COP report, there's this huge buying of uh, comes into the, uh, the COMEX, and sure enough, every Every contract that a technical market guy buys, the the commercial banks sell it to them. I and mean, it's just incredible. I think they sold like 40,000 contracts of gold, essentially short. And uh, so you just know it's being rigged, and you kind of wonder, well, what, what gets us out of this thing? And maybe it takes something, a real serious black swan, something violent, um, but I, there's, there's good spirit to uh, gold and silver in the sense that you know, we have lots of people recognizing